Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Journalist Toolbox training. My name is Mike Riley, your trainer once again. You might notice my background looks a little bit different today. Uh, we're moving. Uh, we're in the process of moving into a new house. Uh, so uh, up on the uh, wall behind me is no longer uh, the uh, Blues Brothers poster and the photos of Chicago. I uh, just left behind the uh, uh, tape holding them up. So uh, we'll be moving to the new uh, location and we'll have a nice studio in there for future training. So today we're going to talk about custom GPTs and specifically about the journalist toolbox custom GPT. I've done a previous training video on custom GPTs, but wanted to get a little bit more into kind of how they work in this one, a little more advanced work. Um, uh, a custom GPT is available in uh, OpenAI's uh, chat GPT. Uh, they're free uh, for anyone to use, even in the free version of uh, chat GPT. Um, GPT stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer. Um, basically, they're tools that can perform a certain task. You know, you can write a headline or you know answer certain questions or create social posts. So they're really kind of taking Chat GPT and focusing it and training it in one specific area. Um, I think they're one of the most overlooked features in Chat GPT, uh, but they're very powerful uh, to educators, researchers, uh, you know, uh, journalists uh, use them for many different things. Um, and uh, it gives you full control if you're building your own chat GPT over the context. You can define its role and set clear instructions and, and really up upload your own files that you want to train it on. Um, in this case, I did it with my website, Journalist Toolbox, downloaded the pages, converted them into TXT files, and just moved them up there and set, set up some instructions, and kind of tinkered with it and tested it. Um, you know, and, and built it in about two, three hours. You know, it didn't take that long. Um, watched a couple training videos. Uh, Joanne Ditus uh, at the uh, Center for Cooperative Media at Montclair State University. Um, Peter Paxel uh, and Peter Bittner, uh, of course, at UC Berkeley uh, and uh, uh, the media co-pilot, uh, respectively. So um, they're the ones that ha had, you know, a lot of really good input uh, on, on how I built mine out and, and trained me basically on how to do it. Um, so uh, it really saves users from having to repeat instructions uh, every time they put something into chat GPT. Uh, and when I use the GPTs, and I've got a whole bunch of them list listed on journalisttoolbox.ai uh, that are useful for journalists, I've had great success uh, with the results uh, over just using regular chat GPT. A lot of people ask me that question in training, saying, well, why use the custom GPTs when chat GPT can just do it? But I find more robust answers and solutions than, than using just a regular LLM. Um, you can build one for free. Um, this is a little chart that kind of walks you through, you know, uh, uh, the process of, of how to do it. You can screen grab this if you want, uh, but I've got more detailed instructions here in a minute. And I'll just give you a peek into the tool I built uh, so you can kind of see how uh, it was structured. Um, it's really a more personalized version of ChatGPT uh, uh, too. You know, you can really set the tone, language level, and focus of what you want it to do. Uploading the documents, I think that's really the best thing. If you're a professor, you know, loading up lesson plans or rubrics or things like that, and have it, uh, you know, uh, build a little GPT for your class. Um, it's uh, something I'm going to experiment this fall with my AI class. Um, but it really remembers your context and stays aligned with your goals. Uh, you know, throughout. Uh, the entire process. Uh, so it can be used academically, which is really cool. But why would you want to build one as a journalist? Maybe you want to have it interact with the website. That's what I've done with the Journalist Toolbox custom GPT. Maybe you know, you're not having luck finding something searching through the Journalist Toolbox website. Try the custom GPT, which may go in and dig it out for you. Um, and I've got you know, some starter prompts up here. Uh, to give you an idea of what you can do with it. You know, you can ask the site, uh, what's a good tool for building realistic images? And I've trained it to give you uh, four or five recommendations uh, with the name of the tool, the link to the tool, and a short description of it. Um, and same way, you know, editing tools, ethics resources, uh, you know, analyzing and visualizing data sets. Um, now, it trains mainly on my website materials. I, I do allow it to go out and, and use the web, but I do limit what where it goes and what it you know pulls from. Um, I don't want it pulling from Wikipedia or you know, Reddit or something like that. Um, so I've trained it uh, to do that. Um, so you can do all kinds of really, really cool uh, things with it. So that's why you build one. You know, maybe you have an idea. Uh, and then, you know, just go and start start working through it and building it. And I'll, I'll show you the steps here uh, right now. 
Um, uh, to build a custom GPT, you have to be on the chat GPT plus version, $20 a month to build one. You can use them for free on a free account, uh, but to build one, you have to you know, uh, spend the $20 a month. Um, just go to GPT. There's a little button up in the uh, upper right corner uh, of your page and uh, hit the create button and click on the uh, configure tab at the top, you know, the GPT store, which is actually on the left side, I should say, on the rail. Uh, and then fill out the form down the left-hand side. It asks for the title, the functions, uh, all the things you want it to do. And be sure to uh, turn on the web search capabilities. So, um, you know, pretty easy. You know, uh, you go and hit, uh, you know, create up here um, and then uh, uh, configure. And it gives you this little uh, area to fill out this form to, to build the tool. It's really all there is to it. Um, uh, no coding uh, required. Um, uh, it's kept under a tab called My GPT, so you can go back in and edit it as you go. Uh, I did a lot of that. I did a lot of testing on it and crowdsourcing. Hey, how does this work? You know, and you know, send it out on social media before I added it into the site. And a lot of people did. You know, gave me some great feedback, and so that led me to go in and customize the instructions a little bit more, and uh, so it yielded some better results. Um, so uh, the developer interface, which I have here on the left, kind of a, a blurry screen grab, um, uh, name, description, the instructions, just you know, basically a bullet point list of what you want it to do. The conversation starters, which you can add, you know, four of them down at the bottom, um, are basically those starter prompts uh, to give people an idea of what to ask. You'll see this in every GPT. Um, so there's the little description of each. Um, the knowledge, too, is the data you want to include in the context, you know, style guide, anything like that. Uh, recommendation model. Um, uh, I use ChatGPT 4.0, um, and they can change that at will. They can use other versions of it, but I recommend 4.0. I think it just works best uh, uh, for going in and pulling out of my site what you would need. Um, I tested a couple others. I you know, wasn't as happy as I was with 4.0. Um, and then, uh, you, you know, you want to upload the, the content that you wanted to, to train on. Um, with mine, it worked best with uh, TXT files, with text files. Um, some people have loaded up PDFs. I had uh, issues with it, just trying a PDF to uh, load it up. It wasn't, it was giving me error messages. Um, but I've seen people, you know, use the uh, PDFs before. Um, so whatever format it, it's accepting for you, that's, that's the way to go. Um, and as you build out your GPT, you want to give it these custom instructions. Um, and what I did was I built mine originally, and then I went to another GPT for help. GPT Architect and Toolmaking Jig uh, are two tools that uh, will help you really refine uh, your GPT instructions. So I you know, kind of created my bullet point list of what I wanted it to do. Then I added it to GPT Architect uh, and asked it, hey, you know, uh, how would you improve this? Uh, kind of like writing prompts, you know, there's prompt crit critique tools out there. So GPT architectures are really good. The old tool making jig is another really good one. Um, so here's the instructions I put in. I named my uh, uh, tool, the journalist toolbox, uh, gave it a description. So you see that when it pops up uh, on the screen. Um, and then you just gave it some basic instructions. You know, I want this GPT assistant. Um, loaded it into GPT architecture and, and tweaked it a little bit uh, into what you see here. Um, the conversation starters are just my base prompts. You'll see those in a minute. The knowledge files, um, I did PDFs on my web pages and then I converted them into TXT files, which I did uh, in, uh, I think it was Claude. You know, it's a very easy conversion. Um, you can batch process them, which is nice. It doesn't take you very long. Um, and then the recommended model again was uh, GPT 4.0. Um, just, it just worked best for my site. You can really kind of choose uh, what works best for uh, the tool you're building. Um, uh, for the capabilities, I chose all of the selections available except for image generation. I don't want it, you know, generating images. I'm not, you know, uh, doing a Dolly 3 type tool or anything like that. Um, so now let's crack it open and I'll show you where to find a custom GPT. Uh, and, uh, you know, what to, uh, uh, where to go uh, to find them. Uh, over here on the left rail of your page, uh, you'll see GPTs. You can open that up. Uh, this is a GPT store. Um, they just call it Explore. Uh, they always feature a few out here. Um, you'll see uh, some of them here. Some of them are, you know, tied to websites, you know, uh, Wolfram Alpha or, you know, uh, Scholar GPT, which has been a long time uh, uh, tool. It goes in and searches 
uh, more than 200 million academic journal articles. Um, it's a lot of articles. Uh, and then, uh, you know, there's some more listed down here, but you can really search for any of them up here. You can type in a task, you know, headline writing tool, headline writing, and, uh, uh, you know, it'll give you back uh, some tools that will work for you and make some suggestions. Uh, maybe if you know the name of the tool, you can type it in there. Um, I'll type in journalist toolbox. Uh, many times they're just linked, you know, off my web page on uh, the toolbox. Um, so you can just go in and, and find link to them there, link to them directly here. Um, so here's the journalist toolbox chat, GP, custom GPT. Um, and it's got like conversation starters, everything about it listed here. Um, and start chat. Uh, and, uh, you know, here are the, the base prompts, I call them. Uh, they call them conversation starters. My description's up here. Um, I always tell people, you know, what's based off of. Um, and I just select this first one just so I don't have to spend time typing it out. What are some good tools for building realistic images using AI? Um, uh, you know, it, it listed five here. The two that <coughs> pop up most times are Midjourney and Dolly uh, show up. But sometimes it'll mix in some others through in Microsoft Designer today, um, which is on my site. Designify, um, Styler, um, does some graphic design work. Um, you know, gave me some decent ones. Uh, usually Adobe Firefly is in here too. For some reason, it's not today. Um, so, you know, if you're just out trying to cherry pick some uh, ideas for some tools, uh, you know, you can go in here and it'll uh, go through the site and pull them out for you as opposed to you going in and maybe going through the image uh, creation page uh, and, uh, you know, clicking on this and reading through and skimming through all this to try and find something, you know. It tends to pull some things from fairly high in the uh, page, you know. Dolly is third on the list, Midjourney's first, Firefly's fourth, so Firefly's usually in there too. Um, but uh, it didn't show today. So and it mixes in a few others. I think it gives a really nice overview of all the different types of things you can do with it. Or you can go into the GPT and be more specific. I want, that, want one that creates, you know, cartoon characters or something like that. And it'll go through the page and find the ones that do cartoon characters, which I have uh, up there. So um, that's uh, the, the GPT and how it works. How is it built? Um, if I click up here... Um, and you can pull down here, this, since I've already built it, it it's edit GPT. Um, and uh, there's the create and configure. Um, I have the configure tab open by default. Um, it, here it is, you know, the name and all the stuff that I had on that slide, the short description that appears up here. Um, uh, and then the conversation starters, I just type those in here. That's what appears over here on the right. And it builds the tool out, the interface out for you as you add in here. Now I can delete these out and add new ones. Um, you know, I think you can do up to six now. I've only seen four, but I think you can do more. Uh, here's the knowledge base. I've uploaded uh, several uh, files. It actually goes on deeper than this. Uh, but it shows, I think, the first uh, uh, 12 or 14. Um, but these are the different pages that I've uploaded, uh, the TXT files. Um, the recommended models down here, GPT-40. Uh, capabilities, I want it to have web search, Canvas, code interpreter, because uh, I do have some data stuff uh, in my custom GPT uh, uh, instructions over here, or the default prompts. Um, and I can, you know, create and add new actions and ask it to do other things. But I created a very simple one for starters. The key up here is the instructions. Um, and you saw this initial uh, uh, prompt on my uh, first page on the uh, uh, slides I was showing you earlier. Um, you know, and I want my GPT assistant to help me do my job as a journalist. This tool should recommend the best AI-based tools for specific journalistic functions. Uh, scour its knowledge base, which I've you know added down below. Um, and then I you know I gave it instructions. I started to fine tune these with that GPT architecture tool. Um, it helped help me you know rephrase some of this. Um, also, you know some of the things I added in is my uh, I got feedback from. Uh, my audience um, telling me, oh, hey, I got this odd result here. So I went in, you know, and added in things like, you know, do not use any information Wikipedia or Reddit. Um, uh, and the other thing I do is I ask it to, to list results in a certain format. So I ask it to list it as the title of the tool, uh, the link, and then the description below. So I tell it what format to give you the answers in. Uh, it's very important. Otherwise, uh, you know, I've had seen some early results that were just, 
you know, give me the name of the, the uh, tool and, and no link, no description. It's just like, here, take, you know, take this tool uh, and, and go use it. Um, and whereas I want to give the reader, you know, a little more robust answer. Um, so that configure tab, you know, once you hit create and you go into configure, um, you're good to go. Um, so that's kind of the, you know, peek behind the scenes of how I did the toolbox custom GPT. And you can do a lot of different things uh, uh, with these GPTs. You know, you can look through, I've got a bunch of them listed over here. One that creates data visualizations, um, uh, takes YouTube videos and summarizes them. One that helps you write prompts. Um, so a lot of things that are very helpful to journalists you can find in here. Um, Scholar GPT, I always have handy too. If I need to search academic journals very quickly, kind of works like Google Scholar. Um, it sometimes gives me a little different results than them. Uh, than uh, the, the Google tools do. Summarize wise, if I have a very long story or a long block of text that I need to summarize into a hundred words, I can give it some instructions and it does that. You know, ChatGPT can do that as well, but I found the summarize wise results and my students have tested this tool quite a bit as well with their stories um, that they found uh, that summarize wise works uh, much better for them. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind. These uh, custom GPTs do some really fascinating things. And also the Headline Hero tool for headline writing. I highly recommend that one. You can find these custom GPTs and more on journalisttoolbox.ai. Uh, the custom GPT for the toolbox is right up here under Engage, as well as the training videos of which one you're watching uh, in the newsletter as well, which is down here. And I'll show you in just a minute. Uh, but the custom GPTs page is right here. The little tab is right in the middle of the home page right now. Um, updated it today. I'm recording this July 23rd. I always list what's new up above, some of the tools that can help uh, help you right off the bat. And then down here, uh, some of the other custom GPTs that you can take and use. News Alley is a good one. Local News Audience Assistance, a pretty cool one. But a whole bunch of them listed here. And I've kind of you know uh, mined out just the ones that I think are helpful for uh, journalists. Uh, and then I have a little video at the bottom on how to find custom GPTs. And this uh, video you're watching right now will be in there as well. So hope you found this useful. Um, and uh, if you have suggestions for custom GPTs, um, uh, by all means, go in and recommend them to me. You can email me directly off the site here. You can uh, reach me on Twitter and Blue Sky is D through DMs. Um, you can also submit a website for consideration too. I have a little form up here. Uh, as well. And I mentioned the training videos uh, in the newsletter. Uh, training videos, I've got more than 130 of them up here on this YouTube channel. You can subscribe to it for free and get updates whenever uh, I add a new video. Usually I add about 13 or 14 a year um, to it, you know, about one a month. Uh, and then also the newsletter, which comes out uh, on Substack uh, every other Tuesday morning around 8 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, and each issue uh, addresses a certain skill or a tool uh, to help uh, solve a, a task or help with a task that a journalist uh, may be working with. Uh, and this is about some of the updates on uh, Notebook LM. You can create uh, uh, you know, mind maps with it now and you can interact with a podcast. Uh, and it allows you to do some search now and bring in information off the web, which is really cool. And it'll connect to your Google Drive as well now. Um, so I have uh, you know, an exercise up here that you can work through and a little training video on it as well. Most of these newsletters have training videos built into them. I recommend a few other apps down here. It's about a five to 10 minute read, depending on you know, how involved you are with a certain exercise or task. So hope you found all this useful. Um, do catch us on our next training video, and hopefully I'll have a little better background for you uh, as I'll be moved into my new studio. Thanks, everybody. Take care.